So welcome back aliens, this is Navin Reddy from Tariska Learnings and now let's continue for the second level caching. So in the first, in the last video we have talked about the level 1 cache, right? And before that we have talked about the theory of it. In this video we'll talk about the second level cache. So let's start with it. So let's, if, you, if I go to app.java and then we have returned two sessions, right? This is your first session, this is your second session. And we know that first level session, on, uh, first level cache works only for that particular session. Now since we are changing this, changing this session, that means it is not able to find the data into cache, in the first level cache. So we have to implement the second level cache. Now how do we do that? Now we have to follow certain steps, okay? The first one is you have to download the jar files or you have to add the dependency for eh cache. Now how to do that? Just go to hibernate dot, oh no, not this file. Go to pom.xml file, this is, this is where you mention your dependencies so if i go to pom.xml file you can see i don't have any dependency for eh cache so i will go to dependencies i will click on add and we'll search for eh cache again we can go to a uh, maven repository and we can find it but otherwise we can do it from here as well so it is eh cache from net.sf that's the domain name okay this one so you have to select e uh, net dot sf dot eh cache and you can go for the latest version no problem click on ok you got one one dependency we have to add one more for the integration of hibernate and en cache for that we'll search for hibernate hyphen eh cache and you can see you got this one here click on that and click on ok now once you have done that go to pom.xml file make sure you have those two things here you, you can see we got these two dependencies click on save and once you do that, you can see in Maven dependencies, it will be getting added. One is the eh cache, uh, it's not, uh, st st it is still building, so it is getting downloaded from the internet, which will take, of course, will, it will take some time. So once you have done with that, once you have got, got the dependency, the next thing you have to mention is, you have to go to your hibernate.cfg.xml file and you have to mention which, uh, I mean, you have to set two properties. First, by mentioning that, you are using second level cache because if you don't mention that in your in your hybrid XML file it will not get downloaded or it will not enabled to enable that you have to set one more property we'll say property oh, it's taking some time I'll go in the background okay so I think I should pause my video for a time being because it is getting downloaded and Okay, so I got my dependencies there. You can see we got Hibernate eh cache. I got uh, eh cache, right? And if I go back to the pom file, because of these two two entries here, we got those dependencies, right? Now I will go to Hibernate and I will set two properties. First one is you have to set Hibernate dot. So you can see if I say Control Space, we got an option of cache, and inside this cache, there is there should be an option called as cache dot use second level cache by default this is in this is false let's set it true because you have to use to uh, the second level cache are we done with it let's try let me just go to go to my app and let's fire this query once again because we have done two things and you can see still it is going for two uh, it is going for two queries that means we have not done with it we have to provide one more thing now whenever you use second level cache, you have to also specify which provider you are working with because we have different providers, right? We have eh cache, we have swan cache and all the stuff. Since we are working with eh cache, we have to mention the property which is hibernate dot cache dot. So in hibernate 4. Uh, from 4.0 or 3.3, we have to use, instead of using provider class, before that we used to use provider class, but now we have to use region factory because if you go to uh, certain websites they, they still use provider class because they are using hibernate 3 now since we are using hibernate 4 we have to use region factory underscore class in this you have to mention the class name now which class it is so you have to type o, uh, hibernate oh, sorry, org dot hibernate uh, we are not getting suggestions so we have to type it complete stuff so we'll say cache uh, then we have to say e h cache in fact we can we can copy that you have to just go to hibernate cache this it should be here 
So if I expand this, you can see this is the class I want to use. So I can copy this, I can say copy qualify name and we can paste it here. Instead of typing that stuff, we can paste it. Even that works. Uh, let's remove this extra class at the end, which we don't need. So this is the this is the properties you have to set, two properties. One is the second level cache enabled, and second is you have to specify the region factory name. Now from where you will get the factory name, you have to go to hypernet cache, which is or hypernet eh cache jar files. You have to expand the first one and you will find your class name there. Now once you got that, let's go to our app and say run, it should work now. And oh, it's not working. It says, oh, what it says? Hibernate, oh, no class definition found. For which class? Okay, let's try. Okay, it's not able to find the definition. We made any mistake here, so that's, oh, we don't have to specify org. You can simply say hibernate. Oh we, need, oh, we need Awaji here. And what else is remaining there? Okay, let's try once again. It says class not found. For class name, class load implementation. Okay, let me just change the version from, is it the version issue? Let's try it. Oh, I'm using the Hibernate, it's my Hibernate version. So you can see I'm using the Hibernate version 4.1.6 here and the version which is we are using here is different. You have to make sure that both, they both are same, right? And have I got that dependency? Yes, I got it. And if I run this code, now it should work. Let's try and it worked but again the problem is we got again we got two queries now what's wrong we have we have specified in the we have got the dependencies we have specified that we want to use hibernate but the problem is not all classes or not all entities are allowed to get cached you have to spec you have to explicitly specify that you are using the cache for that you have to use one annotation called as cacheable so your class need to have an annotation called as cacheable. Second, this concept of cache has multiple, uh, you know, multiple strategies. One is read only, one is none, one is read write. So what is those strategies are? So let me just write. To, to change your strategy, you have to say cache because by default it is none. You have to say usage by, I mean, what way we are using that. So you have to say cache concurrency strategy. That's how you specify the strategy, then dot, and you can see it's an enum where you can specify different strategies here. We have none, which means by default is none. It will not use any cache concept. You can specify a non-strict read write. You can specify read only. Read only means it will only work for reading, not for writing. So if you, if you don't update your, update your database, read only is best. But if you think that you normally update your database, it's best to go with read write. Let's use read only here. And that's it. I think we are good to go. Let's go to app and run. And you can see we got only one select query. Now, since even if you have two different sessions, it is firing only one query because they both the sessions are getting shared with the second level cache. Okay. So let me repeat what we have done. You have to first update your uh, eh cache dependencies. Two dependencies. One is eh cache. Second one is hypernet eh cache. You have to make sure that your Hibernate version is, I mean the Hibernate and uh, cache version is same as the Hibernate version you're working with. Next, you have to update your Hibernate.cfg file by mentioning these two things, which is your use second level cache and region factory class. And on your entity, you have to mention two annotations. One is cacheable, which, is, which will allow it to get cached. And second, to specify the strategy which you are, which you are using. So you can do that with the help of Add cache, uh, add cache annotation. So that's it. That's how we use uh, this thing. In fact, uh, we can do one more thing here. Let's say if I go to app and if I specify, uh, let's say if I don't do, if I don't use this, if I use a query. Now, how can we achieve uh, caching using query? In fact, uh, what we'll do is we'll do that in the next video. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and do subscribe for the further videos.